Welcome to Wild Development Studio. Join us as we venture into the breathtaking realm of wildlife arts and untamed adventures. With captivating stories from the field and ideas to dive into the visual arts, we'll ignite your passion for conservation. Get ready to develop something wild. Welcome to Wild Developments. You're in the right place if you're looking for a heartfelt connection with nature through the visual arts and storytelling. Today, we're focusing on storytelling. If you're yearning for tales about adventure and fun on the open sea, look no further than A Flicker in the Water, Inside the Tales by Bob Gonzalez. In the book, the crew welcomes you aboard the Twister, one of the finest fishing vessels in the Gulf of Mexico. The stories will make you feel like you're out on the open water, ready to land that next big catch you'll be talking about for the rest of your life. The author, Bob, grew up in Pennsylvania near the Pocono Mountains. After moving to Florida, he pursued his love of deep sea fishing, which led to the creation of his second book, A Flicker in the Water, Inside the Tales, a book reminiscent of the old man in the sea. A very wild welcome, Bob. Hi, Lauren. How are you? I am great. How are you? And happy National Florida Day. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> it's great being here. It's great having you here. And right off the bat, I have to ask you, did you have a pivot point in your life that led you to have such a passion for nature? Or do you feel like this is something that's always been inside of you? I've always been enjoyed it from the time I was a little kid. I just liked being outdoors. I liked uh, I liked catching fish. I liked looking at squirrels and owls and all kinds of stuff in the wilderness. Um, it's just uh, I grew up, like you know, like you said, in the mountains in Pennsylvania. And there there was a lot of wilderness. So I got to be exposed to that at an early age. And uh, I think it's great. And I still love it today just as much. I saw that you were born in New York. I did not tell you yet. I was born in New York too. And now yeah. I'm stuck in the mid Midwest and I long to live in Florida out of those three areas. Which do you prefer living in? <laughs> <laughs> That's a loaded question, but I'll answer. <laughs> I, I enjoy Florida because um, I just couldn't take that cold in the Northeast anymore. I, I would want to be there in July, but uh, every other month I'd rather be here. <laughs> I definitely understand that feeling. So is this what inspired you to write A Flicker in the Water? Well, what inspired me was um, I had fished for about 10 to 15 years, mostly in the Gulf of Mexico. And I stopped fishing and um, for a lot of reasons. Um, Cost of fuel got too high. Fishing restrictions became, you know, unmanageable, that kind of thing. So I figured, you know, I have a lot of these stories. I, I like to write. It's my way of still being out there and like reliving these tales. And I put them all down into a book and it just made me feel like I was fishing again. How many adventures out at sea do you think it took before you're like, I have to write these down? Yeah. Well, it, it took a good 10 to 15 years of uh, stories. Um there's some stories from the Gulf of Mexico, some stories from the Atlantic Ocean, um, some stories about the red snappers and groupers and amberjacks. I even gave one a nickname. I nicknamed one of the amberjack Marble Eye because uh, <laughs> Marble Eye was a real old fish and he came up. You could tell he was old because his skin was wrinkled and he was blind in one eye. It just looked like a marble, you know, like a blue marble with no pupil. Mm. So I called him Marble Eye. <laughs> That's really cool. Did you see him often? Yeah, you know, that fish didn't fight like an old fish, though. He fought like a young stud. And uh, But when we brought him up there, it was a sight. I just uh, I couldn't even sleep for a week. I was so excited. So Meryl Hemingway, who is the granddaughter of uh, Ernest Hemingway, she said some beautiful things about your book. How did she get involved with your project? And how does your book relate to her grandfather's book, Old Man in the Sea? Well, my dad grew up in Cuba and Old Man in the Sea was written in Cuba when Ernest lived in Havana. And my, my dad was, a kid, you know, he was about 10 or 12 years old and he lived on the other side of the island in Santiago de Cuba. So there's a natural connection there. And actually, Mariel, her first name comes from the port of Mariel, which is near Havana, where Ernest, yeah. So um, she works with my publisher, Mindster Media, and um, they give her the scripts, and if she likes them, she'll write the forward for it. And uh, she loved this one. She thought it was great. <laughs> she said it gave her a deep sense of appreciation. And, you know, coming from her, that meant a lot to me. That's really cool. So what are, would you say is your ideal group of readers? Do you think it's just 
deep sea fishermen or can anybody enjoy this book? You know, I wrote it in a way for really anybody to enjoy. And a lot of you saw the reviews. A lot of the people said you don't even have to like fishing to like the book. Mm -hmm. And I I consciously wrote it that way. And I consciously wrote it so kids could enjoy it, too, like starting around seven or eight. So they get a sense of what it's like to be out at sea. And um, as far as adults, too, I wanted to put the reader on the boat without actually being there. I wanted to make them feel like they were out on the ocean if they've never been, you know, I just wanted them to experience that. And I I tried to do my best. So you talked about the open ocean. I am an avid diver. I love the ocean. What would you say it is for you that you love so much about the ocean? You know, there's such, like we were talking, such a connection to nature. Um, When you're out there and it's just you and the vessel you're on or the the scuba gear you have on and the creatures, you know, that, that God put on this earth you know and uh it's just something so soul satisfying for me when i'm out there uh i think most people could probably relate to that absolutely it's it's so peaceful and like so filled with adventure at the same time yeah yeah oh the sense of wonder is incredible and it never ceases i mean you continually there's more and more and more it's just fantastic yeah. it, it's, it's what makes us human you know yeah absolutely well would you mind reading an excerpt from your book for us Sure. Um, Maybe I'll start at the beginning, you think? It's the best place to start. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Okay. The water was brightly lit, reflecting the tuna's iridescent colors off of their elongated muscular bodies as we arrived at sunset. Getting to the offshore oil rigs, our fishing destination had been no easy journey. An eight-hour trek through an unpredictable yet calm sea. On the way, we had managed to land a bull dolphin. In Spanish, they're called Dorado, an app name that perfectly captures the golden essence of their beautiful multicolored skin tone with differing vibrant shades of blue, green, and striking yellow, capped off by a flat, squared, bulging head, creating a color combination as diverse and beautiful as any fish in the sea. Most know them as mahi-mahi, a Hawaiian term that means very strong. The bull, a male, had a companion with him, a female called a cow. Male lions are the kings of the jungle, but in the world's oceans, females wear the crown, wear reigning supreme. Captain Mike had been had made the trip many times before, but even an experienced seaman cannot help getting those little butterflies in the pit of his stomach as the departure time draws closer. The excited anticipation of what could happen, good or bad, when leaving the dock is a different yet no less satisfying feeling than a successful trip's return. Filling coolers with ice, rigging bait, setting the rods and reels to the proper length and drag are all necessary necessary tasks to be done ahead of time. Because as any fisherman knows, you want to be ready when that you get that make or break strike. Which as every fisherman who has ever told tales also knows happens each time you put your baits in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Doing this required task for the Twister's crew team would be Troby, known as Drawbridge to his friends. Drawbridge was an experienced fisherman who had more stories to tell than Popeye the Sailor Man, um, only he did not derive his strength from spinach. What do you think? <laughs> I love it. My <laughs> brother is named Mike, and he loves fishing. He actually, he's part of a citizen science project where he will tag sharks if he catches them mm-hmm. uh, yeah. and reports it back. And now that you were reading the book, I'm always going to be picturing my brother as Captain Mike in your book. Oh, that, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. The shark population in the Gulf, I think, is pretty healthy. Um, we get all different kinds of sharks there. Um, we, I talked about sharks in the book some. You'll get to that in, towards the middle of the book. Um, then we have bull sharks and tiger sharks and mako sharks. And when I was fishing, though, they didn't um, believe, which I, I always thought it was not true, but the the going consensus was that great whites were not in the Gulf of Mexico because they didn't feel the water was cold enough. But I mean, it turns out they're out there and uh, they've been caught a lot in recent years. Have you seen any great whites? Um, I don't I haven't seen a great white. One was caught at the pier, actually, in Navarre, Florida, which is in the Panhandle near Destin. Um, I've, we've caught tiger sharks, bull sharks, and makos, but I, I, not a great white. I haven't seen one, but I know they're there. As a fisherman, I'm sure that you appreciate sharks and what they do for our ecosystem, too. Oh, yeah. You, the ecosystems would, would die without them. They, uh, they, they're they the uh, custodians of the ocean. They keep everything clean. 
Absolutely. Yeah, they get such a bad rap thanks to yeah. Jaws, but that's also what got yeah. me excited yeah. to be a diver with Jaws. Yeah, yeah. Are you a um a football fan or do you know any people? Is your brother a football fan? Oh my gosh, my brother is obsessed with the Bengals. <laughs> Okay, let, let me tell you this one line from the book I think he'll like. It's one of my favorite lines in the whole book. Let me get it right here real quick. <laughs> I think he'll like this. I'm trying to get it from memory, but I, I should. Uh, it's better if I read it verbatim here. Okay. You know how in The Old Man in the Sea, um, Hemingway talks about um, everything about the old man about him was old except for his eyes, which were cheerful and undefeated. So what I said in my book is um, neither fishermen nor fish go a full, full, go through a full season undefeated unless you are the 1972 Miami Dolphins. Pins <laughs> <Ends> up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is a great, that's going to be the quote for the show. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're dolphins actually, um, when the dolphins are in the ocean, they um, sharks stay away from them. They're afraid of them. Because uh, these dolphins are a lot quicker and they jump and they, you know, sharks are more methodical. They swim slowly. So um, it, 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 actually, dolphins have protected a lot of, you know, fishermen and things at sea um, who've been in trouble, like in the water, like a surfers even. Sometimes dolphins will surround the surfer and won't let sharks get near them. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because especially with surfers, it's usually a case of mistaken identity. It looks like yeah, a sea yeah. lion or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Dolphins are pretty amazing too. So yeah. you, what is your favorite experience you've ever had out <laughs> on a boat? Well, my favorite experience, it wasn't at the time. Well, actually, it would, I guess it could have been. I, well, I'll keep the reader guessing, but my favorite experience was what inspired the, um, the title. Okay, the title, A Flicker in the Water. That's mm -hmm. a Goliath Hooper on the cover, by the way. That's uh, we get here them here in Florida too. It's the biggest grouper in the family. But anyway, um, <laughs> the um, a flicker in the water was inspired by um, that trip that I was mentioning earlier that we had set on. Uh, we hooked a big giant tuna like at two a.m. and uh, we fought him for a few hours. We untied the boat, turned their engines back on, and uh, then the battle ensued, man. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> and that's uh, talk about the two-hour ordeal we had with that tuna. And uh, that was my favorite day, and uh, that's what turned into the the, the the title for the book. Have you ever had any like scary moments out on the water? We've had some rough moments. Um, I mean, really rough. I mean, I don't think it's ever been life threatening, but I mean, we've been bounced around a, a little bit. This summer, actually, I went out twice. Um, the first day was sunny and calm as could be, and that day the fish weren't really biting. But the second day we went out. It was rough. I told people I felt like a piece of loose change in the washing machine. I kept bouncing around. <laughs> and uh, the fish were biting that day, though. That's how it goes, you know? Mm -hmm. Some days, yeah. So uh, I'll take the second day. I'll take a rough day when the fish bite. I like that. <laughs> Have you had to choose between being on a boat and fishing and doing shore fish fishing? Which do you prefer? Oh, for me, there's a boat every time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you can read about the snapper that we caught here. Um, the snapper, which uh, turned out to be one of the two or three top biggest snappers ever caught in Florida, weighed in over 40 pounds. Wow. Yeah, the state record's 45. This one weighed 42. I don't think I've ever seen a snapper like bigger than a normal fish. Yeah. Yeah, this one was <laughs> bigger than usual, that's for sure. Yeah. So can you tell people how they can find you? Well, I have a website. The website is flickerinthewater.com. And uh, there's links to Amazon there and Barnes and & Noble. And there's lots of cool stories and pictures that are not in the book, um, reviews that the book has gotten. Um, and then there's uh, you can email me from there, too. And then um, uh, my Twitter is flickerinthewater.com, the same as Instagram and Facebook and, and, and all those things. <laughs> I just had a thought as you were saying that people can find you on your website. Are you ever going to do like a a boat trip where you bring a bunch of your fans and you guys can go fishing together? You know, that's not a bad idea. Maybe you can come. I would love to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you going to be in Florida this summer? Uh, hopefully. You can do a trip in the Keys or something. Oh, I love the Keys. I got to yeah. do uh, New Year's Eve in the Keys 
at welcoming in 2023. That was pretty amazing. Which key? West. Key West. Yeah, I love the keys too. I love them all from Key Largo to Key West, man, and everything in between. They're great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isla Morada is really good for Mahi Mahi. I've Maybe gone we'll... to Robbie's around there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I actually yeah. got my hand bit by one of those fish. <laughs> really? Yeah. We were, uh, well, hold, you know, when you get to feed the, um, what are they called? The really big ones. It's not grouper. It's um, they're like six feet long. But at Robbie's, you you can feed them. Oh, it's a tarpon. Yes, that's it's a it. Tarpon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you get to feed them, and the pelicans are all over you. And oh yeah, there's there's lots of tarpon down there. They're all over the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Also, is there a second book in your future? Or th I guess this would be your third book, but maybe something with more adventures from the sea. Well, this one is a little different. This one is um a book about the baseball MLB franchises and their history and uh, baseball. And I've got some poems about football too. Um, in fact, you want me to read you one of those? Sure. This one I really liked. Yeah. Let me pull that one up real quick. If I can get to it. Um, I have to find it. Um, give me one second. Uh, what's your favorite foot? You like the Bengals? No, my favorite team is <laughs> Dolphins. <laughs> Really? Just they're from Florida, yeah. Okay. All right. How about the Buccaneers, man? They almost won last week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, My nephew was telling me all about that. He's like, they got creamed. Yeah. Okay. You know how um, the Patriots just got a new coach, right? Sure. Yeah. So I wrote this one about the Patriots. I said, Christmas is a time of giving, not of greed. But in New England, another ring is all they need. The hands are now all on deck. A new a new coach to cash Bill's Belichick. Bill and the Pats depart, hold the mayo. Their new coach will be crafted a la carte. <laughs> That's really good. So do you, yeah. are you a big sports fan too, or is that something oh, yeah. you do your day job? Oh yeah. Big time. Yeah. I like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love all the sports. I always have. So um, yeah, that one, I hope to be out within the next year. It's a lot of work. Um, that's a lot of, you know, there's 32, I think, major league teams. And um, I cover them in depth. And But it's not just like, a, it's like a historical narrative, but I also engage in the wordplay that I love to do. Uh, that's so I why think I be, would pay attention to it. Because yeah. I love the creative wordplay. Like even the title of your book, A Flicker in the Water, that caught my eye. Oh, uh, okay. And Tales from the Inside, I, I think is just brilliant play on words, but uh, not much of a sports fan but I would definitely read your book. <laughs> uh, this one, I think the flicker in the water is definitely for you. The, the other one, you know, it, it'll be hit and miss, but uh, this one I'm sure you'll enjoy a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. And well, before we go, what is one tip that you have for someone who would like to connect with nature? Um, learn to enjoy the outdoors. Um, be safe out there, though. You know, always be safe. The you know you, you can't take it too lightly because there it can be dangerous if you don't uh, you know take some precautions. You know, um, but get out there, enjoy the outdoors, enjoy nature, and you know it's very soul satisfying. And it, you know it's never too late to start. Excellent. Thank you so much, Bob, for sharing your story with us. And until next time, get outside and develop something wild. Thanks for joining Wild Development Studio. We hope this exploration into the world of wildlife arts and adventure has sparked a desire to get outside and connect with something wild. If you have an adventure that's awe-inspiring, don't hesitate to share. Click the link in the description to submit your story to have it featured on our show or be a guest. Until next time, keep connecting to the wild and see what develops. The views, opinions, and statements expressed by individuals during Wild Development Studio productions do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of Wild Development Studio or its affiliates. Participation in any activities, expeditions, or adventures discussed or promoted during our content may involve inherent risks. It is strongly advised that individuals conduct thorough research, seek professional guidance, and take all necessary precautions before engaging in any such activities. Wild Development Studio, its representatives, or employees shall not be held responsible for any injury, 
loss, damage, accident, or unforeseen incident that may occur as a result of participating in activities inspired by or discussed in our content. By choosing to engage with our content or act upon any information provided, individuals do so at their own risk and discretion. When I can, I like to give you guys some outtakes. And apparently I was having a day and everything was awesome. <laughs> so please enjoy my compilation of that's awesome. That's awesome. And that's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. That is awesome. Bob, you are a saint for putting up with all of those. And guys, seriously, check out Bob's website, read his book. He's got really some amazing and awesome stories. You are going to feel like you are out in the ocean, which is perfect for someone like me who is stuck in the Midwest and can't get to the ocean right now. And it's really going to inspire you to get yourselves out to the ocean, which is exactly what this podcast aims to do, which is to inspire people to get outside. So highly recommend his book. Thank you again so much for your time, Bob. That was awesome. <laughs>